the new student meets the popular girls, otherwise known as the plastics, for the first time. First, we'll watch the full clip with subtitles. Let's go. Why don't I know you? I'm new. I just moved here from Africa. What? I used to be homeschooled. Wait, what? My mom taught me at home. No, no, I know what homeschool is. I'm not retarded. So you've actually never been to a real school before? Shut up. Shut up. I didn't say anything. Homeschooled. That's really interesting. Thanks. But you're like really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty? Oh, I don't know. <gasps> oh my god, I love your bracelet. Where did you get it? Oh, my mom made it for me. It's adorable. Oh, it's so fetch. What is fetch? Oh, it's like slang from England. So if you're from Africa, why are you white? Oh my god, Karen, you can't just ask people why they're white. Could you give us some privacy for like one second? Yeah, sure. Okay, you should just know that we don't do this a lot, so this is like a really huge deal. We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. Oh, it's okay. Coolness. So we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Now, let's break it down. Why don't I know you? I'm new. I just moved here from Africa. You probably already know that the word new is used for objects and young is used for people. But when we want to say that someone is unfamiliar to a certain place, then we can also use new for people in these cases. So when Katie is saying that she's new, she's saying that she's a new student. Just is an adverb that indicates that something has very recently happened in the past. That's why it needs to be used in the present perfect tense. I have just moved here. I've just moved in. But in everyday English, it is very commonly used in the past simple tense. As in, I just moved here. Why don't I know you? I'm new. I just moved here from Africa. What? When what is used by itself, it means that the person didn't hear you or didn't understand you, so they want you to repeat what you've said. What? But here, it's a little different. Regina, the queen bee, is so surprised by what Katie says that she repeatedly says, what? to express her shock. Another way to express this would be to say, no way. Why don't I know you? I'm new, I just moved here from Africa. What? I used to be homeschooled. Wait, what? Used to expresses that a situation existed in the past, but does not exist anymore in the present. Take a look at this example. Oh, I used to watch cartoons every Saturday morning. Now I have to study or work. If you're homeschooled, then that means you're taught at home by your parents rather than by a teacher. It's particularly common for religious families or families that are constantly traveling to homeschool their children. The Adams family is an example of a family that homeschools their children, but for different reasons. I used to be homeschooled. Wait, what? My mom taught me at home. No, no, I know what homeschool is. I'm not retarded. Retarded is a very offensive way of calling someone stupid or an idiot. Nowadays, any use of the word, even when used in slang and not intended to be offensive, is hurtful because it's associated with people that have actual disabilities. So instead of the R word, use idiot or stupid. My mom taught me at home. No, no, I know what homeschool is, I'm not retarded. So you've actually never been to a real school before? Shut up. Shut up. Usually, shut up is a rude way of telling people to be quiet or to stop talking. Shut up, you! But in this clip, Regina is using shut up to express shock, disbelief, and surprise. It's 
funny because Katie does not yet understand this alternate meaning of shut up. That's why she says, I didn't say anything. So you've actually never been to a real school before? Shut up. Shut up. I didn't say anything. Homeschooled. That's really interesting. Interesting is an adjective that describes something that catches your attention. It's engaging and causes curiosity. Careful with the pronunciation. We actually omit the sound of the first E. So instead of saying interesting, we say interesting, interesting. The same thing happens with words like vegetables and chocolate. I didn't say anything. Homeschooled. That's really interesting. Thanks. You're like really pretty. You've probably noticed that teenagers use the word like constantly. In slang, it's used as a filler word in conversations. A filler word is a word used when we want to gain some thinking time or when we want to fill in the gaps in conversation. You know, those awkward gaps. And like is super versatile because you can like use it like in any like part of a sentence like and it'll like make total like sense. That physically hurt to say that. <laughs> Other common fillers include um, totally. Uh, if you're like enjoying this video, like don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't like miss the next video. Thanks. You're like really pretty. Oh my God, I love your bracelet. Where did you get it? In some languages, we only use the word love for things that are dear to us, like people and pets. I love you. But in English, love has a much broader sense. You can use it for things that you like or enjoy very much. I love your shoes. They are like so cute. Here, the verb get is in its most basic form. And it's basically a synonym for obtain or acquire. I got it at a Christmas fair in Chicago when I was 12. Oh my God, I love your bracelet. Where did you get it? Oh, my mom made it for me. It's adorable. Made is the past tense form of the verb make. It's irregular. It means to construct or to make something. Take a look at this example. The first thing I do when I wake up is make a cup of coffee. I cannot survive without coffee at all. A lot of English learners have trouble deciding when to use make and when to use do, but I got your back. If you want to talk about creating or producing something, use make. Like, I make cupcakes every weekend. Use do when you want to talk about actions you need to do. Like for work or for general activities. I didn't do anything yesterday. Okay, here is a disclaimer before people comment down below other uses for make and do. There are a bunch of expressions with make and do that don't really follow any rule, so you just have to memorize them. If something is adorable, then it's cute and lovable. I love that movie. Puppies and kittens are commonly described as being adorable. Isn't she adorable? Yes, I'm adorable. Oh, my mom made it for me. It's adorable. Oh, it's so fetch. What is fetch? Oh, it's like slang from England. We see Gretchen constantly use this new slang word from England. That is so fetch. And in the context of the movie, it's basically a synonym for cool or awesome. But this slang word actually launched as a joke in this movie. Before then, it didn't exist. So it's not actually from England. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. Sorry, Gretchen. Fetch in its usual form is actually a verb that means to go and bring someone or bring something. I can fetch him. Can you fetch me a glass of water? Language teachers like me talk about slang all the time. 
because it's so present in everyday life. But what exactly is it? If we look up slang in Fluent U, a cool app where you can learn English through real world content, we can see that slang means informal vocabulary and idioms used in a language. So basically, slang is more metaphorical, playful, and figurative than ordinary language. This is why immersing yourself in real world content is so important, not only for learning slang, but for learning English in general. It gives you knowledge closer to what you will experience in real life, away from the textbooks. If this is important for you, then you might want to try Fluent U. Fluent U allows you to immerse yourself in a foreign language through real world videos like movie scenes, TED Talks, music videos, and so much more. Using the interactive subtitles, you can click on unfamiliar words and instantly see their context-specific definitions. Plus, you can see how words are used in real-life settings through the video examples feature. After you watch a video, there are personalized quizzes and speaking questions, so you can practice what you've just learned. If you want to give it a try, just click on the link down below and you have a free two-week trial. Oh, it's so fetch. What is fetch? Oh, it's like slang from England. Could you give us some privacy for like one second? If you ask for privacy, then you want to do something in secret or secluded, away from other people. Take a look at this example. <laughs> That's great. Could I have some privacy, please? Could you give us some privacy for like one second? Yeah, sure. Okay, you should just know that we don't do this a lot, so this is like a really huge deal. Huge is an extreme adjective. It's the same as very large or very big. Extreme adjectives are awesome because they expand your vocabulary so much. So instead of saying very big, you can just say huge. Here are some other extreme adjectives. Very hungry, starving. Very cold, freezing. Very small, tiny. In this clip, deal refers to something of great importance. That's why it's so common for us to hear huge deal or big deal together. It's a huge deal and extremely busy. But be careful when it's with the adjective big, as in big deal. Because depending on the intonation and the context, it can actually mean the opposite. They say it with a tone of sarcasm. Big deal. So in this case, they're actually talking about something that's not important at all. It's like, oh, big deal. Usually with a little shoulder action going on, like, big deal. Okay, you should just know that we don't do this a lot, so this is like a really huge deal. We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. Oh, it's okay. Coolness. In American schools, not all, where you sit says a lot about who you are and who your friends are. The high school in this movie, for example, has a lot of defined cliques. A clique is a small group of friends that share the same hobbies and interests. Some of the most common cliques include jocks, geeks, preps, goths, I was a theater nerd. Is that what they're called? <laughs> a theater nerd? We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. Oh, it's okay. Coolness. Coolness is just a variation of the slang word cool. Some synonyms include awesome, rad, and sweet. In other contexts, coolness can refer to the quality or condition of being at a low temperature. For example, the coolness of some ice cream after a long day at the beach is always refreshing. We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. Oh, it's okay. Coolness. Now it's time for you to see how much you've learned. 
Before we start part three, make sure to download the free PDF down below so you get all of these great explanations and amazing vocab. I promise that it's so fetch. Let's go to part three. Why don't I know you? I'm new. I just moved here from Africa. What? I used to be homeschooled. Wait, what? My mom taught me at home. No, home. no, I know what homeschool is. I'm not retarded. So you've actually never been to a real school before? Shut up. Shut up! I didn't say anything. Homeschooled. That's really interesting. Thanks. You're like really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty? Oh, I don't know. Oh my god, I love your bracelet. Where did you get it? Oh, my mom made it for me. It's adorable. Oh, it's so fetch. What is fetch? Oh, it's like slang from England. So if you're from Africa, why are you white? Oh my god, Karen, you can't just ask people why they're white. Could you give us some privacy for like one second? Yeah, sure. Okay, you should just know that we don't do this a lot, so this is like a really huge deal. We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. Oh, it's okay. Cool, miss. So we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> On Wednesdays, we wear pink. They weren't kidding when they named this movie Mean Girls. If you want to keep up with this teen spirit, make sure to watch this video right here where I explain a bunch of teen slang like ballistic, groovy, harsh, from a scene of one of my favorite movies, Clueless. Oh, I love the style. It is rad. It is fire. I'll see you there.